What's up guys, Alec on Carrie here. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite exercises that I've kind of only just discovered in recent history, and that is the zombie front squat, aka the no hands front squat. Today you guys have seen me triple 370 pounds, double 375 pounds, and hit a big single with 405 pounds on this exercise, all at a body weight of just about 160 pounds myself. And I think the question I get asked the most of all, literally every single time I post up footage of me doing a zombie squat is, why? Why do you choose to do zombie front squats instead of just regular front squats or even some other squat variation? So today I wanna answer that question for you guys. So let's jump right in. Now, I've already touched on why I love the regular front squat numerous times in the past. I think most recently I made a video titled, Why You Should Front Squat, which I haven't watched in a while, so I can't quite remember everything that I said there, but I trust myself. So I'll link that one for you guys in the description in case you're interested in why you should be front squatting at all. Today though, I more wanna hash out why at this point, after experimenting with the zombie front squat, I've chosen to stick with that variation rather than go back to regular front squats at all. And for me, there are three primary benefits that the zombie style has over the regular front squat. And that's what I wanna to cover today. And they are the effect that the zombie squat has on the upper back muscles, the effect that it has on the quads, and the effect that it has on overall squat technique. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos covering the front squat, I think you'll recognize right away that all the benefits I just listed are pretty much the main advantages that regular front squatting has over other variations of squatting. The difference here is that when you do them with the zombie style, all of these benefits are basically just amplified to another level. Let's start with the upper back. I've often mentioned how in terms of building pure thoracic extensor strength, the front squat is probably the best upper back exercise in existence. And as it turns out, the zombie front squat actually cranks this up another notch or two, if that's even possible. So during the execution of a normal front squat, you'll either be using a clean grip of one sort or another, or you'll be using a cross arm grip, AKA the bodybuilder style with your arms laid out over top of the bar. Either way though, your hands are involved in the lift to some degree. And the big advantage of that is that since the hands are connected to the arms and the arms are connected to the torso, you can use the hands to help contribute to the overall tightness you're able to create in the upper back, basically by bearing down on the barbell. I know in the past, I've likened this to belted versus beltless training for the upper back where performing a regular front squat would be like belted work for the upper back muscles, and performing a zombie front squat with no hands would be more like performing beltless work for those muscles. But the idea here is that since there's nothing to brace against and there's no irradiation effect coming from the arms, it actually becomes much more difficult to brace those upper back muscles to maximal levels. And then when you remove that crutch of the hands, you're forced to learn how to actually control those muscles all on their own to an optimal degree. Otherwise, you'll never be able to excel at the exercise. Ultimately, this is gonna have a profound effect on how strong your upper back becomes. Obviously, I don't really have any way of quantifying the difference for you, but I think that if you just take a minute or two to just analyze the differences present between the two variations, it'll become pretty clear that the zombie style is taxing the upper back to a much greater degree. And in the long run, that's gonna allow it to become much stronger than it would have otherwise. If you incorporate the zombie squat into your standard training rotation and you work hard to get at least decently strong at it. Next up is the quads. Due to greater knee extensor moments and lesser hip extensor moments, front squats already tend to concentrate more stress on the quadriceps than most other squat variations. However, the difference here is that you don't have to execute a normal front squat perfectly. You have your hands on the bar, and if you don't fully trust your legs, you can let your hips pop up a little bit as you rise out of the hole, and then use your hands to retain control of the barbell and make sure that it doesn't slip off of your shoulders. You still can't do this little trick to nearly the same degree as you can get away with on a back squat, but still, I know from personal experience that you can get away with a decent bit, and that's going to remove some of the stress or even a lot of the stress from your quads and shift it onto the lower back and the hips instead, which kind of defeats the purpose of this particular exercise and also continually reinforces bad squatting habits. Now enter the zombie squat. 
And this little tactic becomes impossible when you have no hands on the barbell to balance it and prevent it from rolling forward out of position and off of the shoulder shelf. You simply have no choice but to remain 100% perfectly upright as you ascend from the bottom portion of the squat. You can't cheat it at all by allowing your hips to pop up. And this ensures that absolutely all of the stress remains on the quadriceps, which is where it is intended to be. Thus, if this exercise is used as an adjunct to squat training or even as a primary movement in phases, depending on your personal priorities and whatnot, in time, any quad weakness will likely easily be eliminated. And along with that, many people will also see a great reduction in the tendency to want a good morning their heavy back squats, which I've postulated is often due to a discrepancy between lower back strength and leg strength where most newbie and intermediate trainees actually have pretty weak legs compared to their lower backs. It's all relative, but it's because they've been using their lower back muscles their whole lives just to complete regular tasks, but they haven't really been using their leg muscles to do anything very arduous. And this all kind of ties into my third and final point, which is that the zombie squat can help to greatly clean up overall squat technique. And this applies both to the immediate act of performing the lift itself, as well as the other squat variations that may be performed down the road. And this effect is due both to a combination of the muscle groups that I mentioned previously finally being strengthened to a sufficient degree, as well as to the repatterning effect that takes place within the nervous system from repeatedly performing technically perfect repetitions. And then those two things just kind of feeding back into each other in an endless circle where if you're forced to hold proper technique, then the applicable muscle groups are in turn forced to grow stronger. And as those muscle groups grow stronger, it becomes easier and easier to maintain good form, which then ingrains that motor pattern deeper and deeper into the nervous system and so on and so on ad infinitum. Now, over the years, I've come across many strength coaches who recommend the front squat as a primary squat variation for a non-powerlifting athlete, simply because they say that you can't cheat a front squat. You either do it right or you dump it. But as I mentioned earlier, that isn't really the case. You can cheat a front squat, you just can't cheat it as much as other squat variations. And if these coaches really wanted their athletes executing perfect squats time and time again with absolutely no cheating, then they would have them perform the front squat as they do, but simply have them remove their hands from the bar. They would probably have to lower their training weights a decent amount at first, but eventually things would catch back up. And in my opinion, in the long run, this trade-off would more than make up for itself through improved technique, greater absolute strength, and less overall risk of injury. If we take a quick look at my 405 pound zombie squat PR from a couple months ago, the first thing you'll notice is that it was fucking hard as shit. But other than the fact that my upper back almost basically just collapsed from barely being able to support the weight, it was actually a technically sound rep. Coming out of the hole, my hips don't pop up disproportionate to my shoulders at all, which is a problem that I've battled constantly over the years and is a bad habit that I'm always tempted to revert to, even during easy submaximal back squats. And then as I fight my way through the sticking point, my upper back doesn't collapse at all, which honestly is a rarity for me with a heavy ass front squat like this. And that's another technique issue that I've long been battling. Then on the other hand, looking at my 395 pound front squat from late last year, which was the first time that I had gone heavy on these in a while, the thing that really stands out to me is that the second I hit the bottom of the squat and try to reverse momentum out of the hole, my upper back caves immediately in a very obvious fashion. I'm able to grind the rep out anyway because I have my hands on the bar to hold it in place and to help save the lift. But that shit is ugly as fuck and that is a big weakness. Now, contrast it with the zombie squat, and you can see that I do struggle immensely to not allow that to happen here, because I know that if it does, the lift is gone. And that's kind of the big difference. In the regular front squat, my upper back just caves. In the zombie front squat, my upper back wants to cave, but without the crutch of my hands supporting the bar, that's not an option. And every single part of me knows this. And so it doesn't happen. 
And so overall, by focusing so much on this variation, I just end up with much cleaner lifts and many more technically perfect reps a much larger percentage of the time, which is important for long-term strength and muscular development as well as longevity. And these overall cleaner reps are probably a very good indication that my quads and my upper back are a lot stronger now as well. Now look, I'm not saying that you have to zombie squat or that you have to do it all the time like I've started doing or just forgo regular front squats altogether. Nothing like that. I mean, honestly, half the reason I started toying with them myself was just out of boredom. But fortuitously enough, I came to find that contrary to what I thought would be the case, I actually much preferred them over the regular front squats that I had been doing for so many years. And to me at that point, the extra benefits of the exercise itself were really just the icing on the cake. But so what I am saying is that if you incorporate it into your rotation every now and then, or even just use it as a warm up for your regular front squats where over time you gradually increase the threshold before you start using the clean grip or whatever grip you prefer. But either way, if you get into the right mindset and you treat the exercise like it matters, I think you'll start to see the benefits of this variation pretty quickly. And perhaps when that happens, you'll fall in love with it just as much as I have. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. Also, if you're interested in online coaching, be sure to shoot me an email at onkiri.elite at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to pass some more information your way. Keep training hard, and I'll catch you guys next time.